So this is a story of my first in-person press event since February 2020. What's your minimum specification? So here we are going to my first official in-person event since this whole thing started. Didn't realize it'd be this soon, this quick. Gonna see how it goes. I'm dressed to the nines as per usual for Anantec. It's with Huawei. They're supposedly doing an outside event at a hotel. I wanna see how it goes. Feeling a bit, a little bit anxious, tested negative. And apparently everybody else is meant to be tested as well before we go, but that's optional. Kinda didn't really make a lot of sense, but we'll see. I'll report back later. So what's this event about? Well, I guess the first set of events going back I thought would be product related, but uh, today's event is from Huawei, Huawei's UK PR team. They've decided to do a uh, let's re-meet the VPs type you know, drinks and stuff in a hotel, basically getting all the press to re-recognise who's important at Huawei UK, which is fair enough, it's only a short trip for me. Uh, take a couple of hours of my time, central London. Let's just hope it's not busy, I guess. Didn't say how many people were invited. I expect there's going to be about 20 of us. That seems to be usual for these sorts of things, but we'll see. Some of you might actually be wondering why I wear a suit to these sorts of events. That actually stems back from Anand when he started Anantic. He was 14, he went to events, and if you're a 14 year old going to events, Nobody takes you seriously. So he started to wear a suit. He was chaperoned by one of his parents, obviously. And it all kind of snowballed from there. Ever since, everybody from Nantec has pretty much always worn a suit to press events. We're usually the only ones that actually do wear suits. Sometimes the analysts do, most of the analysts do actually. But pretty much none of the press and it does make us stand out a bit. Now, I'm not wearing a tie. Those have kind of gone out of vogue lately, unless it's say meeting with a with a Lisa Sue or a Pat Gale singer or somebody of that nature. But yeah, suits are actually comfortable. You know, you get used to wearing them pretty quickly. In Taiwan, it's a bit of a drag where it's 30 degrees heat. But right now in the UK, it's what, 18 degrees? And I'm feeling fine. So that's kind of why we wear suits. pretty much a bust as you could see over 70 people there way too busy way too small the guy presenting couldn't hear him PA system screwed up too loud music couldn't hear anyone didn't know anyone wasn't introduced to anyone no person on the door to invite anyone the simple check was just for the hotel huh what can I say I thought that was going to be a press event and it turned out to be a mixed customer event Pointless. It kind of half feels stupid for actually coming out and going to it. I mean, what exactly was I going to do? If the people there, if I had known them, but they've all changed, if it was in some way 
I mean, the music was loud. We're in a time where COVID and you don't really want people shouting in a bar to each other. And the music was so loud, you couldn't hear anyone unless they were shouting in your face. And even then, it was so dark, the sun had set, and there was just candles. So, can't have events like that. Events like that are stupid. Sorry, but... So I'm back home about, I don't know, three and a half hours since I first left. Uh, 50 minutes on the train there, 50 minutes on the train back. It was, it was a waste of time. Um, so actually, uh, it was a week ago that I was invited to this event, and it was described as, let's just re-meet the VPs, right? Been away for a while, everything's been done over camera, some personnel have changed. Let's all get together. Let's all, you know, just have a chat, make sure everybody knows where everywhere is and, you know, be it as a stepping stone to go forward. Now, this was Huawei's event and, you know, I'm currently testing Huawei device here and I actually myself purchased a Huawei MateView. And, but we've dealt with the company for years on the Enantec side. When they were, regardless of what you think of Huawei as a company, when they were creating chips, we would always be one of the first press they would call uh, to get the lowdown on how exactly it worked. And we got you know special access to certain engineers to ask questions back and forth. Since they've had to move away from that to a more you know, software focused type of infrastructure solution management, you know, whatever they're doing with their IoT stuff, it's been a bit of a different relationship. And not only that, Huawei decided to change their PR company about two years ago, two years ago, two and a half years ago, from one that we really liked to one that's reasonably okay, but we just don't have the history with. So it's a bit of a weird situation. I mean, I definitely want to know what's going on with Huawei now compared to, say, 18, 24 months ago, what they're doing internally, what they're working towards, how things are progressing. What's their market strategy moving forward? What What's their ideal revenue generation beyond just simply smartphones? And there's all these sorts of things going on inside Huawei. And this event was none of those. This is down to regional PR, I think. If you watch my video about you know how not to shill um, and how these companies operate, I'll put a card up here. It's all about how when you have these regional PR agencies that work for these companies, they are purely fo end up purely focused on the market involved because our discussions previously with Huawei have mostly been at the chip and headquarters level. It's a bit different when you suddenly start working with a regional PR. So we don't have that kind of access in the same way because so much of the company has changed. And ever since you know, Huawei has put on the entity list High Silicon, uh, a number of key people from High Silicon have left to go elsewhere. What this event, in my mind, it should have been Huawei doing just that, you know, def redefining itself from the eyes of being an in-person event. Ideally, it should have been at a 
at a lecture theater almost and we have you know a proper honest overview of what huawei means both from a global perspective but also because it's you know uk pr from a regional perspective now this wasn't that i'm actually you know pretty disappointed of how it turned out because i for those who speak to me on the tech tech potato discord or on twitter you'll know that i'm looking forward to in-person events in-person events compared to you know just virtual events it's more about how you speak to people it's more about those side conversations that's where you get the more information rather than just simply you know listening to a slide deck which you can do in a virtual environment anyway i'm really looking forward to that and i really hope that in the future companies if they do want to do this sort of you know let's get together let's meet up let's resynchronize in a face-to-face -face environment there's got to be more of a point to it in this industry in the past there used to be a lot of hey let's go out for drinks let's have a chat let's just put on something nice for the press and make sure you know they're on our side it's all a bit of you know mind games at some level in recent times that has shifted especially with the rise of how media has changed and how there's a desire to always be on the content all the time if you're not out there trying to find content then what are you doing you shouldn't be at this event or okay you show your face and you go and then you actually do something that matters something that's going to bring home the bacon as marketing dollars have decreased the the need to put more content on and the need to find content has taken the preference and it's also the work ethic of a newer generation of tech media i think than what used to be the case 20 years ago so we need to manage that transition and yeah okay companies like Huawei or you know LG or anybody else happy to have events where you bring in you know your major partners your major customers you know your Dells your HPs your, your regional sales reps and have those sorts of you know just drinks sit down chat all casual like from the press perspective it's got to be a lot more focused and a lot more targeted in future. And if any companies are watching this video thinking, how should we put on then the next in-person event, reach out to your press partners, reach out to your customers, reach out to your OEM partners, ask them what they want. And no doubt you'll probably get three different answers. If that's the case, put on three different events. Now, if a company say, in, in this case, Huawei decides they want to put on another event that is more in line, I think, with what I want to do, then yeah, sure, I'll happily go to that, listen, sit down, speak with the people that matter and decide to go from there. I think I'm going to definitely be a bit more cautious on the events I choose going forward, especially given that that event was 70 people crammed into such a tiny space. I know there are sporting events with 60,000 plus people and no mask mandates or whatever you know restrictions you want to put on it. I'm still of the opinion that if I want to go to events, I still want to be reasonably socially distanced and trying to have that one VP person trying to shout to a room and that VP is naturally very quiet and they're speaking in English and English isn't their first language. That the situation that occurs has to change, I think. And uh, hopefully that this sort of vloggy style video, it comes across, you know, how I felt. And yeah, moving forward, if if anyone want, if, if anybody wants suggestions, anybody in, in the PR industry wants suggestions on how to interact with the tech press moving forward with these sorts of events, my email is always open. And most of you who I contact with regularly know that. So here's my question to all of you. At what stage are you deciding to now go out with friends and family in big events, go for drinks, go for meals? How happy and satisfied are you of the situation with a pandemic as it stands? And if you were put into a similar, similar situation for a work event, would you be happy or not? Leave your comments down below the description. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it will instantly add you as long as your emails are linked.
You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month, and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.